Hey guys, so I just wanted to do my reaction to um, The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 11, um, Dead or Alive, or. So, Episode 10, I, I wasn't able to do a review or a reaction to just because of my schedule. Um, essentially, um, I decided... I mean, I was able to just only able to like just finish watching it, and it was. Um, I guess the gist of it is it was like telling about some stuff that was happening with different characters from different at different points. From you had like e, you had like Enid and I forget his name, um, leaving you know being surviving being executed at Oceanside to mostly focusing on Rick and Michonne on the way to meet up with. Um, Jadis and Jadis and the Scavengers, but then a, and um, Simon and Simon and um, Negan have this little conversation about saying, you know, you know, you can't go around just like killing everybody. You to, like only kill one or a few, just so the rest, so other groups will, like fall in line. You know, get them to submit through fear and intimidation. And, you know, Simon being the hot-headed he was, tried to do go that way by going to the scavengers and, um, you know, said that, you know, try to get them to, like, apologize and, you know, basically punish them for allying with, being, allying with Rick. And they said, it's like, okay, hand over all your guns. And then, but then that was enough for Simon because he said that Jason didn't feel remorse. And so he decided to start killing two of... The scavengers, Jadis punched Simon down, and he says, "No, you don't feel remorse." And so he just tells the rest of the saviors to basically just execute everybody except Jadis, to the point where she's the sole survivor, surrounded by now zombified scavengers. And when they, um, I guess Rick and Michonne come looking for them, she they decide just to basically just leave. Rick says that he wasn't trying to help her, trying to kill her necessarily either to die, but they weren't trying to like help her either. So she was. Jays was basically let defend for you know left defend for herself from the from the walkers, and then Rick finally read all the notes left to left by Carl, especially one to Negan. He tries to talk to uh, Negan Negan through the through walkie talkie, saying how. Um, you know, he wanted them, all of them to stop fighting and live in peace. And, but it seems like neither one of them, I mean, and Negan wants him to submit again and up and, you know, stop making stupid decisions to get your people killed. And Rick just seems pretty adamant that he doesn't want to back down. So it seems like we're going to see, um, I guess like just how things will play. I guess like how things will play out in this episode, since it might be focusing on some other character, because that that seemed a little bit more like filler, except for um, the scavengers being executed. Maybe they'll come back into play, but we'll just see what this episode is about. I got it. Cover you. Tara! What? It got away. He can handle it. I love Tara. Hi. You aren't seriously going to listen to him. It's too dangerous for the savior, so you're going to send us? Are you kidding me? They have us boxed in. Tara has a point. Why should we trust him? He could turn on us like he turned on his own people. I didn't just turn on him. I killed him. Daryl saw it. Rosita saw it. You saw it. But one of them got away. So if they find me, Negan puts my head on a pike. I'm not working for them. I'm not going back to them. I chose my side. This is it. These are both antibiotics. This man may have just saved your life. I'm not saying a word. I 
this works, it'll change shit. Everything I did was for sure. It doesn't make it right or something that should be forgiven, but it's the truth. What do you want? Time outside the pen for good behavior. Yeah, one at a time, a couple minutes. Even if I wanted to. That's it then. No. I'm cutting off your rations. A few days, maybe longer. What? Maggie. My And this. The thought of that doesn't scare you or piss you off even a little bit? I'm letting him lead the way. <laughs> I can't see it, but I can feel the look on your face. I'm not saying God led us to this place, that this is some scavenger hunt he's put us on. But to search for meaning in this moment simply by looking around or, or feeling it. It's car keys and a map. Here we go. Barrington Hill. It's gonna make me feel a hell of a lot better. I got him. Okay. So you're clear. We'll fire them. Stay close to the Burks Pass. Good cover. Straight up shot. Yeah, yeah, lead the way, D. Really recognize you like the best. Give it in, shoot your ass. What were you doing? Making sure you're okay. I saw you running after him. Why don't you try and stop me? Could have stopped me. Come on, man. That's the doctor, damn it. That's our asses. Get your damn gun and get in the cab. No. Let's get the hell out of here. No. Prisoners will be taken out in pairs, under armed guard, for work, exercise, and if necessary, medical attention. You'll start by cleaning the stables. What about food? Quarter rations. Same as all of them. Smash it and bash it with this. Well, this, it can just be a touch. Or a big, wet kiss. Either way, this gets you full membership, and that's what we want. We want people to join the club. Hilltop is going to learn to toe the line one way or another, dead or alive. Some kind of shit in between. Yeah, so, okay, so I'll definitely say that this episode is definitely more interesting than last week with um, uh, Carson and of trying to get to the hilltop and and trying to get to the hilltop and Father Gabriel still holding on to his faith and but as well as the fact that um you know um I guess this be, I don't know I guess it's being a medical being a medical doctor and op, obstetrician obstetrician that um Carson was a little bit skeptical but then, of course, they seem to be, you know, locked out or find signs when it's like they found antibiotics that could possibly um, help um, Father Gabriel, as well as find the car keys and find car keys and a map. And it seemed like luck was pretty much on their side until they got caught by the saviors. And, um, you know, of course, it got and of course, Carson was shot trying to, you know, kill one of them. 
So, of course, the scene to break Father Gabriel and the fact that not only did he fail to escape, and also feeling that he failed in his purpose. And now with his continually growing poor eyesight, now he's just forced to work at Eugene's new outpost. But the thing is, is that um, Father Gabriel didn't out um, Eugene as the one who was the per, at the person who helped them escape in the first place. Um, the fact that um, I guess you had like out at the hilltop at the hilltop, um, Henry asking Carolyn Morgan who killed his brother Benjamin. And realizing that he's probably not in a healthy state of mind, Morgan just told it. Morgan just says that Gavin is responsible since he's the one who did give the order that, and that he's, that the bug ultimately stops with him. And I think he's, I think he was already dead in previous episodes, in the, not last week's episode, the one before that, that he, he doesn't feel like he has to go on some kind of like, any kind of like revenge spree and you know Tara and like not tr trusting Dwight and his wine to kill him completely understandable um especially considering he Dwight was responsible for the death of her girlfriend Denise and so naturally he just got frustrated and just wanted and wanted to kill her at first moment's notice even though um Daryl is even Daryl was even though Daryl was telling him to basically just cool it and just wait till afterwards to, to kill him, considering, I mean, Daryl has some like, animosity with um, uh, Dwight as well. And I guess the thing, and, and the fact that it's like he was able to prove himself by, you know, when they were, when the, so the, the saviors had them blocked and were looking for them and was able to, you know, descent, you know, because like they never caught Laura, he wasn't able, to, he was, she was not able to out um, Dwight as a traitor, he just went, you know, he was able to get back into the ranks and, you know, lead them astray and make sure the survivors of Alexandria and the kingdom were able to get to the hilltop to the point where it was, it was interesting to have this whole world reversal where it's like, now, Daryl didn't trust Dwight and was kind of pissed at what he did. And then, um, Tara was the one who was at, uh, vouching for him now. And it was interesting, and I remember watching, I think it was an episode of Talking Dead where somebody asked um, Alana Masterson if um, Tyra could ever forgive Dwight for what he did, just because um, I don't think, I didn't, like I said, I just got into this episode, the show recently, and I didn't watch every episode of season six. I think that the death may or may not have been unintentional. If it's wrong, just correct me down in the comments below. Um, or maybe it was collateral damage. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to see if Tara could, yeah, it was an interesting question considering, you know, I know Tara was with the governor and even though she didn't know any better about, you know, what kind of man he was and wasn't necessarily, you know, complicit when he was like attacked the prison in season four. Um, she didn't take like an, Active role. She just wanted to get out of there, and she didn't actively try to kill anybody, and didn't want to be a part of it. it she would be. She's understanding of somebody, uh, you know, a person being on, on the wrong side of things and being misguided. But I don't know. I mean, like I said, this is like she's never been in a position where it's like someone's been taken from her like this. I mean, and you know, like I said, White's been an, an you know an enemy of Rick and his friends, and. Dwight did kill Denise, so it'll be interesting if maybe she will, if, you know, maybe she, maybe she will find it in, in her to forgive Dwight, or maybe, or maybe he'll, or maybe she'll end up like a prisoner at the hilltop instead, but just not kill him, and maybe just like some, as some kind of middle ground, and of course, um, and you also have uh, Lauren worrying about like the rations and all the resources they have, and with um, you know all the survivors from Alexandria and the kingdom coming coming to that all this one place, like, like their resources would be more exhausted, and they're reluctant to give the, give any of the resources to any of the prisoners, like um, rations and so rations going out to work, going out for work or exercise or get out on good behavior up until the very end. And like, 
And of course, they just change, you know, I guess they changed their minds and reached a deal with them to say the prisoners can go out in pairs and for work exercises and food. And but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I like this episode like a lot more. I know a lot more just with like, the different dynamic, with, you know, how different characters were paired off and how they, you know, I guess like played off each other and, you know, like the role reversals I mentioned and. Gabriel helping Carson after he got caught in that trap, and the fact that was like the fact that his vision was already going bad, and he was like closing his eyes to like, and it's like, dude, I'm like, come on, man, it's not like you're not Daredevil, and but he still did it, and you know, I mean, I'm not like you know a super religious person, like you know the whole God has a plan thing, but you do feel kind of bad that he looks about you know. Like people seem like it was kind of broken from what happened with um, um, Carson, not just from like the death itself, but it's just sort of like maybe his faith is even might be even might be even broken now. And apparently, like I really just thought just getting bit by a, a walker or just maybe turn or just maybe turn somebody, but I guess having infecting them with their blood might also. Um, I didn't. And it was an interesting idea that Negan came up with, maybe just using their blood, maybe just like mixing their, using their blood to infect them to see like, will they, will they fully, fully turn somebody or would it be like, or like he put it, like some shitter in between dead or, you know, undead or alive. It's an interesting concept, you know, now that they're actually, um, somebody, they're actually going to try biological war and more like a biological warfare against, um, Rick and company and, you know, like, it's not even, it's an idea that hasn't even been explored on Fear of the Walking Dead. Maybe it will be in their next season, but I'll be interested to see how this stuff is going to, um, play out. But anyway, guys, what do you think of the episode? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.